thing we're going to do is get into the image scoring. So that's the second one in our process here. And it is the second in our uh, workflow. And I want to find a reference image. And I want to prepend it with ref for reference with an underscore at the beginning of the file name. Literally, that is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a few outliers, maybe, but by and large, I'm looking for that reference frame. So let's go into script, batch preprocessing, and subframe selector. And again, if you look over here, it's an S icon. I can't actually load it from here. It's just a placeholder for my process flow. So I'm going to go in here. And let me clear all those out. So now I'm going to point over to my NAS. And yes, my directory structure can be uh, a little lengthy. Uh, but it helps me keep things uh, in a way that I understand. So this is anything related at, to Astro Imaging. These are going to, you know, all my targets, all my data is going to be underneath that folder. I had some data before I put the focal reducer on. So now I have a with focal reducer uh, folder, my target, camera, how long was this uh, individual frames, and at what ISO. So if I went over to here, you might see, as you can see on M27, I tried two minute and five minute frames with an ISO of 800 on there and a 1600 on there. If we go to our calibration, you'll see the darks, camera, various lengths, and ISOs. And then right there, when I took those, I do need to update those, which I'm going to attempt to do uh, for now, for this particular tutorial, I am going to uh, use these, but I will be updating those in the new future. So let me go back into here, my focal reducer, and obviously I don't have anything here uh, because I've blinked all of the images. And here is all the images I consider good. Select the first one, Control A in Windows to select them all, and open. And let's move that over here. System parameters, I leave these as default. Yes. Subframe scale. What you can do is get that from uh, SGP. Go in there. Select any one of these images, uh, do a place hold on it, and it will give you your rotation, your scale, uh, various things. So I will I will be showing that in the SGP um, uh, tutorial video, which I should have already put uploaded, and I guess I should take a note here, but it's knowledge so uh, you, that's pretty much the only thing I update there star detection and fitting I leave these as all default expressions now what I did put in here and this was a suggestion from I believe it was Richard Block's video two times the SNR weight the SNR weight is a value. If you come in here and you do edit, you'll see a bunch of the values you can use. SNR weight 
is one of them, as well as full width half max. So two times the SNR weight minus the full width half max. And that gives me a plot uh, down here. Okay, and I'll go into that so in a little bit. Uh, table I don't worry about. There's my plots, as you can see. You can select a bunch of different things. The weight is where this expression comes in. And, you know, the graph will plot the numeric values here, and then the images across, you know, uh, the number of images across the bottom, and it'll give a nice little graph, and we're looking for the top most on the graph, which we will see in a few minutes. And then output, you know, a lot of people I know, and in those tutorials, they'll, you know, they'll use this to um, remove uh, bad images and different things. Uh, I'm not that concerned about it at this point, since this really is the first um, image I've gotten around eight hours of data collected, and it's a star cluster, so we're not too overly concerned uh, with structure and nebula and all these other fine uh, detailed things. So uh, for for this instance, I'm not going to play with, you know, uh, put in a postfix of an A or an X and all these good things. Um, I just want to make sure they're all within uh, a certain range, and which we'll see on the plot. And I want to try to find one of the highest value images to use as my reference. So with that, we're going to come down here and do a measure. The window closes. Now, this will take some time to run simply because the data is up on the NAS. Could I take those images, move it to my SSD, and then do the measure and all that jazz, yes, it would be faster from a processing standpoint. It doesn't have to go to the NAS, dump a copy to memory, process it, remove it from memory. Um, but as you can see, it's going fairly quickly. Uh, the total time it would take to copy it to the local hard drive would be right around in the same realm of time frame as it would just leaving them up there and letting it do its thing. Uh, it's just one less step to have to worry about. It's not doing anything to the files on the NAS. It's just making a virtual copy into memory, processing the information, and then clearing it from memory. So there's no threat of it uh, impacting the, the data itself. So we're going to let this run, and when it is completed, I will be back. Okay, so this, still, this thing's still chugging along. You know, it's taken five seconds uh, an image, uh, but how do we know where we're at as far as the images are concerned? If we look at the file name, can see 11C, M103 light 11C 60 seconds. So if we go into our folder, you'll see some of the earlier images, M103 open cluster, that's after I started renaming my stuff in the sequence, 8C, but we are, we don't have the open cluster, it's just M103 dash underscore light. So uh, since everything is alphabetical, we know we're down here in the 11C range. So when we see 12C, 
12 Celsius, we know we're almost done. So when we're about there, I will come back. All right, well, that's plugging away. So how much data do I actually have? That is the question. Well, as you can see, 478 items. Each one is 60 seconds in total length. 480 minutes would be eight hours. So I am two minutes shy of eight hours. Uh, now, just to keep things even and to satisfy my OCD, yeah, I'd probably take two frames tonight, probably five, uh, just in case there's a couple errand issues. Uh, just so I can round out that 480. But two frames is not going to really make a big difference. So we will use the data set we have. All right. Looks like we are done. That definitely took uh, some time. Looks like nearly an hour. So here we have our plot like most of the values are going to be between negative 4 and negative 7 it looks like got a couple some that are down those could be those uh, uh, washed out images but we were mostly looking here for this guy right here. Unfortunately, I don't know how to actually know which one of these it is. So I kind of just have to say any one of these would do. So we're looking at... Uh, Let's see, 300, 400, 1, 2, 3, 4 ticks, so each one is about 20, so this one will be 40, so 340 would be that one, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 335. We look up here in our subframes and we scroll down to 335. So we're looking at 8 Celsius on the 18th, 195040. So scroll down here, 8 Charlie on the 18th. One nine five zero four zero. So that would be this guy right here. We'll do a quick rename and to the reference frame. Let's just make sure we're still. That looks like one of our better friends. So we're going to dismiss this now and open that up real quick. I should have cleared that out, but that's okay. So just double click on the desktop. We're in that folder. There's our reference frame. Do a quick stretch on it. Not the darkest, but that is pretty well centered. Decent stars. So that will be our reference frame. And next will be batch pre processing. 
And we will get into that after I take care of a few other things here at the house. Um, as you can see, it's the day after Christmas. I'm just going to show you how backlogged I am due to work and other things. We've got episode 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way down. I still have yet to record the PhD and SGP settings. And then this one is uh, 19, so that'll probably be 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, so I'm going to take care of a couple things around the house here. Do a couple of edits on these to get these uploaded while I've got some uh, time off. And then I will be back later to go through the batch pre-processing. Appreciate your time. See you in a few.